Hi, in this tutorial we're just going to go over the Robinson ring emulation reaction and basically this takes a ketone, uh, an alpha beta unsaturated ketone and creates an alpha beta unsaturated ketone. So before I begin I've just got to talk a little bit about ketoenol tautomerism. There are tutorials on ketoenol tautomers and in acidic conditions and basic conditions. I'm just going to use the acidic example. Um, and the whole of this reaction will be as an acidic example for the reaction mechanism. If you want to practice um, the reaction mechanism, I urge you to do it under the basic conditions, and then you can you get a feel for different kinds of uh, mechanisms. So the first thing to do uh, for this reaction is to understand the keto enol tautomers. And basically, in in acidic conditions, for example, a ketone can exist, oops, I've just changed that to a uh, black pen. So a, a ketone, any ketone, can exist in different forms and, and if it picks up a proton, so a proton is basically the nucleus of a hydrogen atom, so if we're, if we're talking about acids then these are really protons because there's no electrons around them. And oxygen's got a lone pair there, so it can quite easily pick up that acid and stabilize it because the oxygen uh, can easily stabilize this uh, proton. So the first thing, the first product from this is a protonated ketone. I sort the charge out, the charge is actually resting on oxygen because it's donated some electrons. And what happens now is it, this molecule tries to sort its charge out, it tries to become neutral again and in doing that it loses one of its alpha protons so these are alpha here, the ones, the next carbon along to the carbonyl called the alpha position so it loses one of the alpha protons to form a double bond now it forms a double bond there, it's forming a double bond because there's an inductive effect from this oxygen is pulling the electrons towards itself so it actually pulls the electrons from its carbonyl onto the oxygen which makes this delta positive and, and the overall effect is to lose our hydrogen back into solution as a, a proton and you end up with a double bond so this, the product from this becomes the alpha beta unsaturated alcohol which is otherwise known as an enol okay and plus H plus so your H plus is regenerated okay that's a plus so this is an enol so there's an en and there's the ol and this is a ketone so this is a keto enol tautomerism and uh, there are tutorials, and I'll, I'll put tutorials up as well on the on the differences of this. The stability of the enol itself uh, will be uh, based around how stable this double bond is, and whether these are hydrogen bonded. And in in the other tutorials, I will explain uh, where you get special cases where this is favoured. Under normal conditions, the the ketones more or less favoured, so the equilibrium lies strongly over here. But in certain examples, certain molecules, this is a fair bit form. So you just have to um, judge it for, for yourself, really. So in terms of the Robinson ring granulation, this is going to play a crucial role in the reaction mechanism. This Because we've got two ketones, we're reacting together, really. So let's get cracking with the uh, actual mechanism. I'll just scroll it down a tiny bit. So the first thing to do is to activate this. This is what we're going to attack the alpha beta unsaturated ketone and remember I keep saying alpha beta so I'll just draw them on so that's alpha and that's beta so okay just that a bit more of a circle alpha beta okay so the first thing to do is protonate the alpha beta unsaturated ketone put a proton around and see what we get now I won't draw, well, I will draw equilibrium arrows because it's always going to be an equilibrium. So the first thing, pick up that proton, do 
a probably a lone pair of electrons on the oxygen you pick up a proton and gives you this species here very similar H plus and the plus lies on the oxygen because it's lost some of its electron density and the effect of this is to activate this molecule if we draw the resonance forms for this now we'll do other tutorials on how to draw resonance forms we'll see um, where it's susceptible to attack so the first resonance form let's just move one electron if we move that one what's the product a resonance form of basically just the movement of electrons okay so they are the same molecule nothing's changed we're just representing them differently by moving electrons around so there's no reaction going on so the product from moving the electron there onto the oxygen is to move the charge basically so we've lost the double bond we became a single bond and the charge has moved to the now the next form we'll draw another resonance arrow so resonance arrows are drawn like this the next form is to move those electrons onto that charge like so and they form a double bond across here so you notice I'm not putting the electrons onto the charge itself because I'm, I'm trying to form a bond across here and that's how you should draw them really in between the bonds and the resonance form for that is this we've got a double bond there now but now the charge has moved to here so this this carbon here is still got if we if we drew the hydrogens in this carbon here has still got all its complement it's got four bonds so it's got a double bond there bond to hydrogen bond to this carbon but if we draw this carbon here we'll see this is probably the easiest way to explain that where the charge is going is to draw all the hydrogens in you'll see that it's now lacking um, a, a, a bond so the, because the double bonds moved over here and filled up that space there's left a space there basically now instead of drawing the resonance forms all the time you can probably get away with doing this in your head because you can you can imagine from this species here oh yeah you can move them there so that leaves positive charge there and if I move them there that leaves positive charge there so instead of writing it out like that all the time what we tend to do as chemists is is write the structure like that and if that's H plus and it's protonated then we can write if I just write it in green so we can say oh that's delta positive and that's the delta symbol there so that's what I'm writing delta positive delta positive there and delta positive there this carbon here is pretty much neutral nothing's happening and that oxygen is more or less staying the same as well okay so if it's going to get attacked it's going to get attacked to these it's going to get attacked by uh, um, a nucleophile then it's going to get attacked at these delta positive positions because that's where the majority of the positive charge is going to lie so either here or here okay so that's uh, either in, in this position right near the carbon on the, what's called a carbonyl center or here on the other thing now why have I told you all that I'll just delete all this now but I've told you that because if we get back to our first part here let me scroll it back up a little bit the first stage is after after the protonation of this is actually to attack it with um, another enol is to attack it with this one so what I'll do I'll just quickly copy that and drag it over here if I draw the electrons on now you can see I've activated this for attack but what happens is this enol form of this species one of the reactants can now attack it there it could attack it there 
and you do get that as some byproduct but it attacks there first because that's the most accessible so at the right at the end there and that's called a Michael addition and the product from that Michael addition so that's a Michael addition I'll just write addition like that so it's a Michael addition and the product from that if I draw it out Get your ketone pack, so it's like it's like your total tomorized pack, and then you get the first part connected, and that's going to give you oh, H. We've got to watch where these electrons are going now, so that's going into the forming double bond across this position here. So if we just number these up one, two, three, four, and that will be one two three four and it's never a bad thing to number your molecule your atoms up if you're not too sure there's nothing wrong with that and I'll put the double bond in here because we're getting a double bond between two and three two and three and we get our alcohol back so we're now left with an enol now this enol can tautomerize again and it does so it does it twice so we draw the the first tautomer would be to pick up a, a proton. I'll draw, draw the proton we're going to pick up. And that goes like that, whizzes around, very quickly picks up that proton. And the first product from that will be the ketone. So it's gone from an enol to a ketone. Lots of double band bond character. I'll put the I'll put that proton in actually. And you can see. I'm just going to put another proton on there. There's actually three on there. I'll just draw one for the reaction mechanism. So that's a methyl group there. So the next stage is actually formed the, the other pro, uh, enol on the other side. So basically putting the double bond on this side. Now it seems a bit long-winded. Put that over there. I'll just draw another proton. So we're picking these up. So this that's what all this is about. Enol type of chemistry is just about whizzing electrons backwards and forwards between the alpha positions and the ketone. So the next step is to form this, and this is a very important bit. Put the double bond on there. I'm going to put a hydrogen just there for now. One, two, three enol OH okay so we've got that molecule there I'll just move this across a little bit give myself some more space now what happens now um, this oxygen here picks up this proton now to save a bit of space what I'm going to do I'm just going to pick that proton up like that okay so you pick it up like that and rather than draw it out again, what I'll do, I'll just add the double bond, add the bond in. I'll just get rid of this. So I picked up a proton, and that basically puts that on there. And if I move the charge, the charge then goes onto oxygen, and that should be a bond, so it should be black. Okay. So that's all I've done. I've just picked up another proton, but on this oxygen here. I've simply done that to save space. And what happens now is you get what's called a my, uh, an aldol reaction. Now, aldol reaction, there's all, there are tutorials I've done on aldol reactions. This is an internal aldol reaction or an intramolecular aldol reaction. That goes on there like that. Sorts the charge out. So that being slightly charged draws the electrons makes that really attractive for this as a nucleophile and the product from that I draw it like that is this species here so now we've cyclized this is really good we're getting there now we've got a double bond in there we've now got OH that's that OH there and what else have we got 
got all my charges sorted. I think that's it. Right, so I'm just going to scroll down a bit. I've got a bit more room. Okay, so we've now got this product here. This can pick up another proton. His H is a little more like his these days. Right. So I'll pick up a proton. And we create the best leaving group in the world, water. Okay, and this is essentially always in equilibrium. So that should be equilibrium arrows, really. So. And this creates this. Now I'm going to put a few hydrogens in because the next stage, so we've now got OH2 which is H2O, which you all realise is going to be water, okay? That's not what that is. Right, now I'm going to just change colour. I'm going to put some optional, actually make, I'll make it green. So if I put a hydrogen there, I can put a hydrogen here, and I can put a hydrogen here. Now I'm drawing that on purpose. So this is the alpha position. That's alpha. That's alpha as well. That's beta. And these are gamma positions. Right. If we want to lose this, and this is charged, of course. I'll sort my charge there. And what's going to happen is water is going to leave in the next step. Now in order for that to leave, just like we're doing the uh, enol forms, we can either lose that proton to give us a double bond across here, we can lose this proton to give us a double bond across here, or we can lose this proton to give us a double bond across here. Now if you hadn't seen the product right at the beginning, then and this will be driven like this. So once you lose water it's not likely to attack again. The product is actually the alpha beta unsaturated ketone because that is the most thermodynamically stable product. So this is alpha and beta position and that's because it's in conjugation with this ketone. If we draw the resonance forms for this and of course we lose water, we've got water as well there. If we draw the resonance forms for that, we can see that it's actually stabilised. So if we move electrons towards a more electronegative element, which would be oxygen, that leaves a, leave a gap there. And leave that there like that. I just I'm actually drawing it backwards, so I should have should have drawn the arrows for you first. So all I've done is this, I moved that over there like that. And because it's neutral, still neutral, we've got minus and positive. If we move the electrons towards the electronegative element, then it's going to leave a gap there. And what that does, we have to re we have to have a look at how that positive charge is stable stabilized. And in this case, in the alpha beta unsaturated position, it is because these electrons can go into there to form a double bond there to give this product. That's still minus, but now we've got a positive charge there, like that. So we look at how this is stabilised here. We can see that this, um, first of all, it's stabilised with this um, this double bond. The electrons go into here, across this double bond. Um, so it can be in resonance all the time with this. These electrons will be whizzing around to give us kind of this shape, I'll, I'll keep it in red actually, just to make sure it's, you can see that it's different. So that you, you can draw it like this, like a dotted line, and that's where the positive charge is going to be sweeping around. Okay, so it's going to be like a ticking clock, it's going to move backwards and forwards like that. So that stabilizes for, for a start. Also, in this position, because this is a um, a tertiary uh, carbonium ion. We also have like this this stabilization from these carbons as well into that positive charge. So that orbital that doesn't have any electrons can actually feel some of the electrons from the other carbons and the hydrogens that are present as well. 
in um, this hyperpolarization type of um, effect. So that is ba basically um, why we get the alpha beta, the alpha beta unsaturated ketone, and that is basically the uh, Robinson ring ang annulation. Just going to recap the key points for the Robinson ring annulation before I finish. First one is it operates via this, this keto enol tautomers. That's very important. You get them sorted, you'll be able to do this mechanism. Second part is that the first stage of the reaction involves a Michael addition. So a Michael addition from your ketone onto your alpha beta and saturated ketone. So you've got two products in the two raw materials of your you've got your ketone and you've got your alpha beta and saturated ketone. It does a Michael addition, so that's the first one. Just circle that. The second part of the reaction after it's sorted out and you've got the right enol form is what's called an aldol reaction. That's an aldol. So an aldol reaction. So a micro addition followed by an aldol reaction and then all you could do is lose water. So loss of water dehydrates your product to give you the alpha beta unsaturated ketone. And that is a Robinson ring annulation reaction.